Hey everyone, I just ate some cookies. Yummy. <laughs> Welcome, my name is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. This video we're going to be discussing second normal form. Second normal form. Oh, dang it. Ah. Sorry, where was I? Okay. Second normal form. It's the second in the normalization process, as you probably would have guessed. Now, the prerequisites of second normal form is that you've already completed first normal form. So make sure you watch the previous video. That's going to tell you how to get to this point. Now, second normal form deals with something known as partial dependencies. Now, we've talked about when you have a value for a column, it depends on that entity. Partial dependencies come in when you have two or more columns for the primary key. So this always deals with compound or composite keys. When you have multiple columns that are part of the primary key, that primary key is known as a composite primary key. So let's say we have one key over here and one key over here. Now, this is where the partial dependency comes in. When you have a column, it depends on that primary key. So that means if we have a column down here, it's going to need to depend on the primary key. But when we have composite keys, it has to depend on both of them. But if we have a partial dependency, it depends on less than all of them. So for example, if we have three columns that consist of the primary key, it has to depend on all of them. If it only depends on two, we have what's known as a partial dependency. So in the situation of only having two, if it depends on only one, we have a partial dependency. Now I know this is all conceptual, but give me a couple minutes, I'll give you some examples. But for now, just know that partial dependencies are bad. The entire goal of second normal form is to get rid of partial dependencies. And what that means is if you don't have a composite key, you don't even have to worry about second normal form. That being said, some of the principles inside of second normal form can still be applied and can help improve your database. The reason that is, is you actually never have to use a composite key. You can force yourself to always use a single column for a key. For example, if this is named column one, <laughs> it's a really awesome name, and this one's column two, instead of having a composite key, in theory, you could just have column one, column two, ID, and then just give it a number. And then this would not be a composite key because it's just one column. That being said, the data in this table should still depend on both of these because that's how the table is set up. You're just gaming the system by adding a new column. It doesn't improve your database any, it just makes it worse. <laughs> so only add a column if you already know how to design the database and don't just add a column to avoid second normal form because that's going to defeat the whole purpose. Second normal form is a good thing, not a bad thing. So if you see yourself trying to kind of squeak through the cracks and avoid having to do the rules of the normal forms, then the chances are you're adding a layer of complexity and that complexity is layered on top of a bad designed database. So don't be obnoxious. Don't try to game the system. <laughs> Follow the normal forms and everything will work out just great. Now that we talked about the concepts, let's go over some real examples. Really practical examples. Back to our animal dating site. I ate that cookie and now my throat's all like... <sighs> but first, I wanted to explain one more thing. Second normal form comes up more often when you have natural keys. The reason that is, is because when you have natural keys, you often have to think of more columns in order to force things to be unique. Not always, but in general, you can just add an ID to whatever table you have and you're good to go. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because I was kind of just yelling at you guys not to do that just a minute ago. But essentially that's what surrogate keys do. <laughs> oh, I'm such a hypocrite. But essentially, if you're using single column surrogate key columns, that's good. But there are circumstances when you're going to have multiple ID columns inside of a primary key. For example, when we design a many-to-many -many relationship in databases, we break that up into two one-to-many relationships. So to do that, we need what's known as an intermediary table or a junction table or a... I got nothing else. <laughs> and when you do that, you're going to have two columns in there, at least, it depends on how many tables you're joining, and the group is going to have to be unique, not just one column. In that situation, you have two IDs 
and you're still using surrogate keys. The primary key is the combination of the two columns. In that situation, you are required to understand second normal form. What I am advising against is adding a third column to say the combination of both of those IDs. So I guess there's a fine line between making it easier on yourself by using IDs and making it harder on yourself by adding too many IDs. And that's a fine line that you're going to have to find because it's a little bit subjective depending on you, the database management system, and also the project you're working on and the team you're working on. Some people like to have that third column just so you can reference an entire row by one ID rather than a group, but some people prefer not to just so you don't have that extra column for no reason if they don't need it. Now moving on to super practical examples. We are starting an animal dating site and we need a way to express relationships between one animal and another animal. I personally think one of the easiest way to design databases is to start with the wrong way to store data and then start picking away all of the obvious things that are wrong and you end up with something a little bit prettier. That's kind of how the normal forms work. So we'll start with a bad design database, go through the normalization process up to second normal form, and then we'll be good. In that situation, we still might need some improvement, but that's what third normal form is about, which we will discuss in the next video. But for now, let's start with the animals table. Now I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time writing out all of the columns. That's because there's only one column I'm really interested in. And that is the column of who the animal is in a relationship with, whether it be dating or marriage or betrothal or whatever. So there might be a column in here such as relationship with. So we'll have an animal ID because we always need some kind of primary key. And then we'll have relationship. And let's put some data in here. Let's say there's one animal with the ID of three, and an animal with the ID of four, five, six, and seven. So these are all different animals. And now this is actually a foreign key. But how does this work? It's actually a foreign key that references the same table. It just references a different column. So this relationship with column references the animal ID column. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. So we could say the animal with the ID of three is in a relationship with the ID of four. But that means that the animal with the ID also has to be in a relationship with the animal of three. Because you have to update two rows every single time you want to store one relationship, this isn't the best way to design it. This can introduce anomalies. For example, three could be in a relationship with four and four in a relationship with five. And now it's this chain, and that's not the way I envisioned this dating website to work. <laughs> so because there's an association here, you can see three is associated with four, and four should also be associated with three. This would be a good example of when we should use an association table, or a table inside of a many-to-many -many relationship, an intermediary table. The odd part of this, though, is that there's only going to be a total of two tables rather than three. So imagine it like this. We have a table for animals, and then we have the intermediary table, and then we have a third table, which is also animals. <laughs> now obviously these are the same exact table, so we don't need to draw it twice, but that's essentially what we're going to do when we're thinking about this, but when we actually design it, we'll only use two. So we could say we have an animal over here with the idea of, let's go with three, and an animal ID over here with four, and we combine them of three, four inside of our table. But since we're only using one table and this references the same table, we only need two. So let's draw a table, and this will be named relationships. We actually haven't really talked about second normal form in this example yet. This is kind of just to prepare us for a situation where we might run into second normal form. So inside of this relationships table, we can make an association between two animals. So we would have animal one ID, animal two ID. And now we only have to put in one row for every relationship. So we could say the animal with the ID of three is in a relationship with the ID of four, the animal with the ID of four. <laughs> and now 
we don't have to go and put 4, 3. That's because that association is already made. So that means we have to assume that this is a back and forth relationship. So 3 is in a relationship with 4, and 4 is in a relationship with 3. If you wanted to make it to where 3 could be in a relationship with 4, but 4 doesn't have to be in a relationship with 3, if you wanted to do that for some reason, then you would need to think of actually adding rows for each direction. So we could say 4 is in a relationship with 5. But as I said, that's stupid. I don't want to do that, so we're not doing that. Because we have this association now, we're not going to need this column. And now this table would just have data on the animal. So we'd still have the animal ID, the animal name, the animal species, all of that stuff. This table is devoted to just the relationship. If we wanted to add a different relationship, we would have to use different data. That's because this dating website is not going to allow one animal to be in a relationship with multiple animals, because that's just messed up. I'm gonna teach these animals purity. Okay, so that means five could be in a relationship with seven, but we can't use three again in this column. What that means is that this column can be unique and this column can be unique. You could also make the group as a whole unique. That way we don't have any repeating data. Now something I don't know is how to enforce uniqueness this way. So that way if we had four, three, it would be a violation. So if you guys know how to do that, please leave a comment and let me know how to do that. But for now, we'll just leave it at this. So that way we can have three, four, but we couldn't have three, five. You sick animals, gosh. And you're probably wondering, where in the world does second normal form come in with all of this crap? Well, it comes in with this. That's because we have a combination of IDs as the primary key. And when we have that, we have a composite or compound key, and there's a potential for partial dependencies. So where does a partial dependency come in? A partial dependency in this situation would be any data describing the animal. For example, if we had a column here, running out of room so it's going to be a really small column, <laughs> and if there were any attributes describing one of the animals. So let's say we had animal one species. That's really good information to have in the database. The only thing is it doesn't belong in this table. That's because the A1 species is dependent only on animal one. That's because it's only describing one half of this table, the first animal. So if we had a normal many-to-many -many relationship, let's say it looks something like this. Beautiful, I know. And inside of this table, we had information related to this entity. That would be a no-no. The only information to go inside of this table has to be relevant to both of the primary keys. The way you can tell if it depends on both keys is if you change one of them, is the data able to change? For example, in this situation, we have A1 species. If we changed animal two, let's just say we change this to an eight, right? Well, this data is always going to be the same. That's because there's no connection to animal two at all. So if you have another many-to-many -many relationship, just ask yourself, if we change this half of the table, is this attribute going to change whatever attribute it is? If there is a column in that table and you change one of the primary keys, is it able to change? In this situation, if we change this column, this column is unable to change. Therefore, we have a partial dependency. That's because it only depends on part of the primary key. Now, you might be asking yourself, if we can't store this here, what kind of information could we store in a table with a composite primary key? Any kind of data that describes the connection of the two entities. So let's say we have these two rabbits and they are in a relationship, right? Well, any data that describes this relationship could be stored in that intermediary table. For example, we could have a column establishment date. That would be the time or date of when this relationship started. We could also say type of relationship. For example, we could have, you know, dating, married, engaged, it's complicated, and so forth. This data all describes the relationship. So this would not be in violation of second normal form. Hopefully that describes second normal form pretty well. Just be careful of those intermediary tables because that's where it'll sneak in on you. Thanks guys, hopefully it was helpful. If you like this video, click like. 
And as always, click subscribe on my channel because that really helps me out and encourages me to make more videos. So thanks guys, in the next video we will be talking about third normal form. Thank you. I know I've said that like four times, but I'm really thankful. <laughs> Do you guys like my drawing? It's, it's better than usual, so I thought I'd ask. <laughs>